Upon further analysis, I actually did decide to put the center marks on the 632 tapped holes because we need those to specify that these 632 tapped holes share the same center point as the corner fillets. And I realized I was in the pattern option when I should have been in the independent option. So make sure you have this depressed when you're adding the center lines to those four holes. And also on, fur on further re reflection, looking at the top view, it looks like it might be beneficial to have another detail view in this drawing. So let's move our isometric view over along with our original detail view that we already have. And let's add a new detail view. Let's add a detail view by going to view layout and then detail view. Let's add one right here. Right here. And then place it right to the right of your top view. You can go back to the top view and move the E to the outside so it's nice and neat. And then we also want to move the slot dimensions oh. Uh, to the detail view. So this 250 by 625, let's move that over. And then also, whoops, I accidentally copied it instead of just moving it. But we also want to move this 125 over. So I'll move this out. I'll move my slot dimension to the top radius here if I can. It's not letting me, so I'll delete it. Go to annotation, hole call out, and then just click on the top radius of the top slot. And then what we also want to do is add the location dimensions of the slot. So, but before we do that, we have to add slot center mark. So click on center mark. Click on the linear center mark option, and then also the the slot ends option right here, and then click on your slots. You only need to click one time per slot, and it throws in the whole slot dimension. Now let's add the locating dimensions from the left edge to the slot center being 0.5 and from the bottom edge to the slot to the slot center being 0.5 and then let's also add from slot center to slot center let's add that as a reference di dimension where a reference dimension is one that's not needed for the design but it's added for additional information a reference dimension is denoted by parentheses so here's what we got so far. So I'm going to line up this 0.5 with the 1.25 and I'm going to center them both. And then also center this 0.5 over here. And then up in the slot callout, I'm going to double click or just single click works as well. And then down in the dimension text area of the property manager, at the very front, let's type for capital X space so that we know that this slot appears four times. And the four times being applied here lets us know that it's that we can use these same dimensions on the right side of our housing as well. Looks like I might need a little more room so I, I'm going to make a little room by moving the detail view just over a little bit. There we go and let's also uh, align this, de this new detail view 
with our top view. Align horizontal by center, click the top view, there we go. Another annoying thing you might notice is that some of our dimensions are gray and some of them are, block, are black. That's a default color option where it puts all the dimensions that we add manually as gray and then all the dimensions that are imported as black. We can change that in the, in the, in the options. So if we go to options, under system options, click on colors, scroll down until you get to non-imported dimensions or driven dimensions. Click in the edit box and make those black. And now they all turn black and it's great. If you're like me, you might want to change a couple other colors. You might want to change your hidden lines to green because ev everybody loves green, right? And how you get there is drawing hidden model edges. You can change this to a neon green. We can also change our dimensions to pink. If you like pink, I like pink. And also your annotations to pink as well. Which if you scroll down, there's annotations imported and annotations non imported. Should want you you want your dimensions and annotations to be the same color. And I'll make sure I'm click, clicking the right pink by clicking the same one that I clicked the first time. And everything changes accordingly. Look, look at that. Now we got some nice color on the screen. This isn't required, this is just optional, you know me, I like my colors. I like color distinguishment on the page. So, I now, I now, I now have it. And I'm realizing that there's a couple more things that we need to fix on the top view. This does not belong here, the 1.25, because that's in the detail view, and we don't need this 0.125 for that radius because we have it elsewhere. So now I believe we're in the clear. There we go. Just one more thing before we close this drawing out and then you'll be on your way to practicing.